Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the E2 reaction. So in an E2 reaction, we are going to start with some alkyl halide and then synthesize an alkene, right? So the E stands for elimination. So let's look at an example here. We'll start with a simple alkyl halide. To get this reaction to go, we're going to treat an alkyl halide with some base. And it turns out there's four main bases we will use. Sodium or potassium hydroxide, sodium or potassium methoxide, NaOME, sodium or potassium ethoxide, NaOET, and then potassium T-butoxide, right, which is ko tert butyl So that is a K plus and an O minus attached to a tert butyl group. Okay, so this could be here when I'm drawing this, that's not a T, those are four carbons. We could write it out, right? We could also write it out K-O-T butyl. And you're going to see that for these bases, we can kind of classify these in two ways. The first three, right, are going to be small bases. And then the last one, potassium T-butoxide, is going to be a large base. And in a little bit, we'll see that that's a difference, uh, that those react a little bit differently. Okay, but getting back to the problem, we will have one of these bases, right? We'll have one of these bases. And in the reaction, you're going to get out an alkene. Okay, so we go from an alkyl halide to an alkene. That's the E2 reaction, okay? So let's just kind of cover the mechanism of this reaction. All right, so I will, uh, I'll draw the same alkyl halide. Here we'll treat it with a base. We'll just use sodium hydroxide. A lot of times for elimination reactions, the solvent will match the base, right? So if you're using OH minus, the solvent would be water, right? And then also uh, you can see that heat helps favor this reaction as well. So here I've added my base, right? sodium hydroxide, water is my solvent, right? And then heat helps favor the reaction, okay? So you'll see when we have, um, when we use sodium methoxide, our solvent would be methanol. Sodium ethoxide, our solvent would be ethanol, right? So when you have an ETO minus, the solvent is ETOH. MeO minus, you have MeOH, okay? So getting back to the mechanism, this mechanism is in fact um, pretty easy. Oh, excuse me, I wrote an alcohol here. That should be an alkyl bromide. <clears throat> so basically what we're going to do in this reaction is we're going to be drawing in on, drawing in our hydrogens that are adjacent to our bromine. So here I put a dot by the carbon, carbon connected to the bromine. And, that, and now I've drawn in the hydrogens attached to the carbon next to the bromine. So I've, I've marked that with a square. So we have bromine dot, then we have a ne the next carbon over and is a square, and then we've drawn three H's here. And this is symmetric, so I could do this on the left or right side. So in fact, the mechanism is quite easy. It's one step, right? So if we use NaOH, that's a strong base, which means we have complete dissociation to form our hydroxide ion, HO minus. And basically what we're gonna do is that lone pair, one of these lone pairs, is gonna abstract the hydrogen on the adjacent carbon. These two electrons are gonna come down to form the double bond, and that will kick out the bromine. Okay, so the first arrow, the lone pair becomes a bond. This bond here becomes a new bond and then that bond becomes a lone pair, 
Okay, so if we look at the product we have here, our product will be our alkene. All right, so if we, we sh at this point, we should be able to be comfortable with our, our hydrogens, but the carbon on the left now only has two hydrogens. The carbon in the middle still has one, right? And then we have a CH3 over here. And then the other side products that we're forming, we're forming water, right? Because, um, you know, right here, right? That forms water. And then our Br minus kind of leaves, right? So we're also going to be forming um, plus Br minus. Right, and because we started with a sodium, right, that Br minus is really associating with our sodium plus. Now, when we're talking about organic reactions, we really don't need to draw in water or bromine or sodium, right? We just want to draw our organic molecule, our final product, the alkene. Okay, so that's the mechanism. What we see is that this is a one-step mechanism. Okay, there are no intermediates in this reaction. So that's just kind of the first thing we should look at with the E2 reaction is it's a one-step mechanism. All right, let's look at another example here. So let's take a look at an alkyl halide that is not symmetric. So here I'm going to be adding a chlorine. We'll treat this again with one of the bases we talked about. Here I'll use sodium methoxide, N-A-O-M-E. So the normal solvent we'll use there will be methanol, right? So I can write H-O-M-E, but it's probably a little better for us to write M-E-O-H. And again, generally, we heat up this reaction. So in organic chemistry, a triangle just means heat. So if you see me draw a triangle, that means heat. So now when we look at this problem here, so we know that our chlorine is going to be our leaving group. So I'll put a dot by that carbon. So now I have two choices on adjacent carbons and they're not symmetric, right? So I can draw two hydrogens on the adjacent carbon on the left. And then there are three hydrogens on the carbon on the right. So the question really becomes in this reaction, are we going to be abstracting hydrogens from the left side or abstracting hydrogens from the right side, all right? And that's gonna be, be determined by the base you use. So small bases, NaOH or KOH, NaOME and uh, N-A-O-E-T are always going to abstract the hydrogens or the side where there's less hydrogens because that will form the more stable alkene. So that will form our more stable alkene. Okay. The large base we only have one example of that. Our large base, potassium T-butoxide, ko tert butyl right? Again, that's a K plus, O minus. So here I'm drawing it as an ionic bond. Carbon, 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 carbon. Okay, that will abstract the side where there's more H's, and that will form the less stable alkene, okay? So in this reaction, because we're using a small base, we're gonna abstract from the side where there's less H's, all right? So let's again draw the mechanism for this. So we have MeO minus, right? We're using strong bases. So NaOME is going to dissociate to an Na plus and then OME, a minus on the O. So we can just write MeO minus. So the mechanism is going to be exactly the same. It's one step. This lone pair on the O will form a new bond to the H. 
that carbon-hydrogen bond will form our double bond, and then the, the carbon-chlorine bond is going to break and become a lone pair on our chlorine. So let me draw the lone pairs on our chlorine. There's three. So in our final product here, we see we're going to form the more stable alkene. This is our di-substituted alkene. And that will be the product. Right, again, the side products, we also form our methanol. Um, and then we have like Na plus and Cl minus. But again, we don't really need to draw these. We just want to draw the organic molecule. Okay. So that's the product with the small base. So what would this look like if we did the same reaction with the large base? So I'll take the same product here, my chlorine. So if we treat this with potassium T-butoxide, KO tert butyl, in HO tert butyl and heat. All right. Again, so we can draw our circle here, two squares. We always abstract the hydrogen from where the squares are. Two H's on the left, three H's on the right. Okay. Now we're going to be forming, we're going to be abstracting the hydrogens from the side where there's more. So if I write my O tert butyl, carbon, 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 that's a minus. Again, a one step mechanism. That lone pair forms a new bond to the H. These two electrons break to form the double bond. That kicks out the chlorine. So the product we would get here is one butene, right? This is a mono substituted alkene, right? And mono substituted alkenes are less stable than di substituted alkenes, okay? So first thing we have to remember is our mechanism, one step. Second thing we have to remember is the size of the base matters. Small bases abstract the side where there's less H's to form the more stable alkene. Our large base will abstract the hydrogens from the side where there's more of them, and that forms the less stable alkene. All right. Next, we want to talk about this abstraction a little bit more. Um, one thing we need to know is that when we abstract the hydrogen, that the hydrogen we abstract must be anti. So the hydrogen has to be anti to the leaving group. Right, and right now our leaving group is a halogen. So if we go back and look at these examples here, right, if we look here, this is a chain, and in that chain, there's free rotation around these bonds. So when you have a chain, the molecule can freely rotate to make the hydrogens anti, and that's uh, using a small base or using a large base. This bond here can freely rotate, so the hydrogen will always be anti. So this factor where the H must be anti isn't really relevant when you have a chain. It is very relevant when you have a ring. So let's look at an example now when we have a ring. Okay, so I'm going to be drawing in. Now we have our leaving group, our bromine, that is on a wedge. I'm going to be drawing two alkyl groups on the side, so we have a methyl on the top and an ethyl on the bottom. So let's say we treat this with a small base, NaOH in water with heat. Where are we going to form the alkene? All right. So again, let's put a, let's kind of put a dot by the carbon that's connected to the bromine and then put a square by the carbons that are adjacent to it. And then let's draw in those hydrogens, right? So here, the hydrogen is back on the top. The bottom side, the hydrogen is coming towards you, right? 
if this methyl is a wedge, then the hydrogen has to be a dash. If this ethyl group is a dash, then the hydrogen has to be a wedge. All right. So when we draw on these hydrogens, we want to put dashes and wedges. Now we have to remember that the hydrogen, oops, the hydrogen has to be anti, right? So when we have a ring here, if the bromine is a wedge, then we have to abstract the hydrogen that's a dash. So we have to abstract the red hydrogen in this example. Again, a one-step mechanism. Let's draw our HO minus, okay? So the mechanism here, that lone pair will abstract this hydrogen. These two electrons will come and form my double bond. That bond will break to form a lone pair on the bromine. So the final product we're going to get here, we're now gonna have a double bond here. Because we formed a double bond, this methyl group doesn't have stereochemistry, right? That's not a dash nor a wedge right, not dash or wedge anymore because that carbon is sp2 hybridized. So this should be a straight line, all right? So just to keep this a little bit cleaner, let's just erase that. And then, uh, of course, we haven't touched the ethyl here, so we still need to keep that ethyl, all right? So here is the product that we would form in this reaction. Last thing I want to talk about is where do we get the number E2 from? Where do we get the number E2 from? Okay. So when we talk about E2, that 2 stands for second order. This is a second order reaction. Okay. So if we draw sort of our simple example here, a chlorine... I treat this with NaOET in ethanol with heat. Here I'm not drawing in the mechanism. We're going to form the more stable alkene. I'll abstract the hydrogen it's from here. That's the product we get, so I'm not drawing in the mechanism. When we talk about second order, this is a concept we kind of covered, or you covered in general chemistry, so let's review what that means. When we talk about second order, that really involves the rate of the reaction. So the rate is equal to a rate constant K times the reactants. So second order means that two reactants are involved, right? So if we think about the mechanism, how this reaction proceeds is you have your ETO minus this ETO minus is interacting with my alkyl halide, right? The mechanism only has one step, right? So in the, in the one step here, these two reactants are reacting together to form the product. So what that means is the rate is determined by the concentration of these two reactants. So rate equals... K rate constant times the concentration of my alkyl halide, Cl, times the concentration of my ETO minus or my NaOET. Because we have our two starting materials, our two reactants, participating in the reaction in the rate determining step this is now called second order because we have our two reactants here all right so that's what second order means all right so that's the e2 reaction and um, a few pieces to remember um, about this. Again, one step mechanism, the differences in bases, the H must be anti, and the fact that the reaction is second order.